Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the old Russian math Olympiad from the year 2000. This is from the grade 9 I believe. And I suggest you try this very nice combinatorics problem out for a minimum of 30 minutes. Ideally an hour to an hour and a half especially if you're getting somewhat comfortable with combinatorics. You've done a couple of problems with the tricks. You know whether it's invariance or some games, some copying, whatnot. And now you want to actually think and like tinker with the problem. This is a great problem and that you should try out for about an hour to an hour and a half, but not more than three hours. And if you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 15 minutes. And now let's begin. So we have Tanya and Sasha. Well, they're Russians, so it's Tanya and Sasha. And Sasha's actually both a man's and a girl's name, a boy's and a girl's name. And they're trying to guess this number x, which is less than 100. Now, the interesting part of the problem is this condition. The GCD of x plus m and n, where m and n are two numbers that you pick. And show that Sasha can determine Tanya's number in seven questions. Okay, so... One question you may ask yourself is why seven? What is the connection between seven and a hundred? I mean, x being less than or equal to hundred and seven, right? If x has, if it's a much bigger range, you probably need more than seven. If it's say a million, you probably can't get away with seven questions. And so sort of that's like one thing we need to think about. Why? What is the connection between seven and a hundred? The second connection is. What is this? The GCD of X plus M and N. How can that give us information? So maybe let's, one thing we can do is, if we don't have an idea for what to do, why is this a hundred and why is this a seven? Let's try to, you know, guess numbers for X less than or equal to four. You know, let's solve a easier problem. Like I just put it down to a four, which may be trivial, but I think it's a good sort of thing to get us used to what the problem is asking us. So, how many questions do I need is not a question. Well, I have numbers one, two, three, and four, right? So, I can, well, I can divide it by two. I can figure out the parity of the number I can ask about the GCD of x plus two and two. And if this is even, it's either two or four. If it's odd, it's either one or three. So that gives me the parity of number. Now, maybe, okay, so if it's even, say, say this is equal to two, then I want to determine if it's a two or a four. Uh, and I can, I think the simplest way is like the GCD of x plus four and four. If that is equal to and if that is a four, the number is four. If that is a two, the number is a two, right? And here, if I get a one, I'm looking between one and three. I'm trying to see if I, there's things that I can do both here and on the other one. But I can't just go, okay, well, I know they're odd. I can do GCD, maybe not X plus four, but I can do the GCD of x plus 1 and 4, right? Because now if x plus 1 gives me a 4, then I know the answer is 3. And if it gives me a 2, I know the answer is 1. So I can then figure this out in two questions. I don't think one question is enough. Because the information we get from one question Huh, how many numbers like we can get for any number we can get here? Like four might give us the biggest number of different responses. A one, a two, or, or a four. And so there's three responses, right? And because we have four potential candidates, we won't be able to determine between them. Maybe it has to be with big factors, but it's a four. Maybe let's look at... Maybe here I'm going to ask you to actually pause for 10 minutes and try to play around with some small cases and see if something comes out of it for you. 
And now I hope that you pause just a little bit and try this just a bit, just a little bit. And for me, the next sort of thing is, well, okay. So let's see, like, if I'm dividing this up in like in two, like I can go ahead and ask for x plus two and two at the beginning, and then I can divide them into odds and evens. And then I can maybe figure out if they're of the form 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 3 if they're odd, or 4k plus 2 or 4k if they're even, with my next question. By looking at the GCD of literally x plus 4 and 4, and x plus 1 and 4. This can help me determine what they are in terms of 4k. And that again will then cut it up into two halves, into a half again of numbers. And now if I look, what is two, I'm going to be cutting a hundred roughly, roughly seven times in half. When I cut four in half twice, I get to my number, right? Four is two squared. So two to the seventh is also 128, which is greater than 100. So I'll be able to get 100 down to one. And this is also the motivation for us why it is that we have seven questions and its connection to 100. Maybe that's what it is. And now from here, the question is, do you want to pursue this? And how can we pursue this? So let's think about the first question is like, is it odd or even? Which is really like the equivalent of this question is, give me the GCD of x plus 2 and 2. And then to understand what it is respect to 4k, give me the GCD of either x plus 1 x plus 1 and 4, or the GCD of, say, even x plus 2 and 4. They both work. I mean, x plus 4, maybe it's easier to write this down if it's x plus 4. And then we can figure out from there on a question on whether it's, say, if it was divisible by 4, whether it's 8k plus 4 or 8k. And I can then figure out the GCD of, Say, say in that case, when it's divisible by 4, I would have the GCD of, say, x plus 4 and 8. If it was of the form 4, this is of the form 4k, of the form 4k plus 1, I would ask the question, what's it called? I would ask, I would ask x plus 3 and 8 which will give me either a four, or it will give me a, if this, so this is either 8k plus one or 8k plus, or 8k plus five um, of, the, of that form. And then this gives me whether it's one, that form or the other. And then if I have it, so the form 4k plus two from this question, ask about the GCD of, literally x plus 2 and 8, and now I think there is somewhat of a nice structure here. Once I ask, once I get that the number is of the form 2 to the alpha t plus some r, once I get this information, I ask about the GCD of x plus, so what do I need? I need to understand what it is with respect to whether it is 2 to the alpha plus 1 t plus r, or whether it's 2 to the alpha plus 1 t plus r plus 2 to the alpha. All right, whether it's this form or that form. And to do that, I need to add x plus 2 to the alpha minus r, and it's 2 to the alpha plus 1. And then I'll get that. And by doing so, I'll get that x is going to, in seven questions, I'll get that x is of the form 128t plus some r, and I'll get what that r is. 
And given that the number is 1 through 100, there's only one number of this form for any r between 1 and 100 in this case. And that's how I'll get my x. And that's how actually, not me, but how Sasha can determine Tanya's number with a no seven questions. And exactly actually seven questions. Actually, don't, maybe not exactly if you get it sub the form, say 64t plus 60, then from here you can already determine that the number is 60. Right? You don't need the next question. You know it cannot. But if you get 64t plus 30, then you're not sure if the number is 30 or if it's 94. And that's why you really need the seven questions. So this is how we do it. And we're literally go inductively proving that at the beginning, I can get whether it's of the form 2k plus 1 or 2k. And I'll prove inductively that I can figure out 2 to the, that if it's of the form, what remainder it is after alpha questions. And then I can get that the number is of this form. And then by induction, I prove that for the next number, I assume that for the I've found its remainder this far. And then I know for alpha plus one, it's going to be one of those two. And by asking this question, I can determine which one of these it is. And also this two to the alpha minus R, we just need to make sure that this is less than a hundred. Maybe that's like the only tricky part we need to actually take care of. Actually, no, this is two to the alpha minus R. So alpha becomes 64 when we ask for 128 so we're in the clear here uh, because like even here i would ask the remainder between what's it called 64 and x plus 34 to get this one and then i'll finish up and that's how we finish up this problem another way of thinking about this what it is we're doing is we're trying to determine when we write the end. And this is nothing that I expect you to know to come up by yourself. This is the sort of thing I do sort of have some little expectation that not expectation. I don't know you, but this is something that you could come up with by just thinking for a long time. And, but another sort of technique now that I want to show you is a different way of seeing this what it is we're doing. And what it is we're doing is we're really trying to figure out the representation of X in binary. It's binary base two representation, right? So it's representations with zeros and ones. And the first question really asks, is its first digit a zero or a one? And then the second question is trying to get at whether it's Second digit is a zero or a one. And the third question, try and get that. And we're sort of inductively saying, we figure out, we figured out what it is, what its first R digits are. And we're trying to get the R plus first digit. And that is sort of like what we're trying to get at with, with, with this question. Now, another sort of thing we could have gone down is to look at, instead of these, powers of two is to look at interesting prime factors, right? There is a, there's pretty likely, I think, a, though I haven't found it myself, a solution where we say, we can say get rid of evens and odds, but then we can look at maybe it's prime factors, right? The prime factors of X, though I think I'd try that, but I think the difficulty with that is that you have just a lot of prime numbers, right? You have prime, a lot of prime numbers between zero and a hundred, I think around 30 ish, but, but that might be an overestimate 30 ish, right? Between 20 and 30 prime numbers. And that's why a lot of notice after doing so many, writing them out a couple of times. But the thing here, what well, that would be difficult is how do you get, in fact, we'll say a, a high prime, like 89, I believe is a prime or 93. Then how could you determine X, what X plus 
what x is from asking seven questions by looking at different prime numbers or things that are combinations of prime numbers by having n be that combination of prime numbers. It seems difficult to capture that and the same time to capture even numbers. And you can go that, that route. I don't know if you find a way that you can solve via that, please let me know. And this, but this finishes up our lovely little problem from the old Russian math Olympiad. I love Russian competition problems. You're sometimes like, Mwah. absolutely lovely. And but this finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.